Hello there, this is the second uh, method of differences uh, PowerPoint uh, video. Uh, exercise 1D continued. Uh, we just ran out of time last time, so I'll just crack on with this. Um, I need to set my pen up again. And uh, hopefully then... So this is where we're up to. We were basically looking at um, trying to find the sum of R squared. And the way we were doing it was using a result that we'd previously worked out, which showed that this expression could be equal to this. And by doing that, it allowed us to use the method of differences on the right, for, um, on the left hand side. And we ended up with this expression that if you do this, this thing, you get 2m plus 1 cubed minus 1 cubed. Um, but the point was, we also could play around the left-hand side as well, because the 24 could come to the front, there it is. The 2 could be taken out, and the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n of all the 2s was just a 2n. That was a standard result we've already seen. And we can use this standard result to prove this standard, other is a standard result. And this, this was a formula, actually, we got given last time when we did sums of series. I'm not sure if you recognised it. Um, but anyway, so this is what we're going to try and do. And what did I do? Well, I, I wrote that, therefore, on the left-hand side is equal to the result of all this stuff I did here. I have essentially just moved the 2n onto the other side. Um, and I just want to just, perhaps on a new slide, just show you that again. So I have now effectively got 24 sigma r squared. Um, equal to, and if I just write it down, I, I know it's equal to this 2m plus 1 cubed minus 1 minus the 2n, because of course the 2n then moved over from the other side. Um, now this is actually a result that we were playing around with last time. Um, so if I just see if I can find where I've written it down. There's certainly an 8n cubed at the front of it. Um, so 8n cubed was definitely there. Uh, it also said uh, plus 12n squared. I think when we did it last time it might have had r's in it, but um, now it's n's. Uh, plus 6n plus 1. So that's what we got when we multiplied 2n plus 1 cubed out. Um, you could use the uh, binomial theorem or whatever. So uh, minus 1 minus 2n. And if I tidy this up, I get 8n cubed plus 12n squared, the 6n and the 2n make 4n, I subtract them, and the 1 take away 1 is 0, so that's fine. And that's equal to 24 sigma r squared. Um, now this actually can be factorised. I've got a 4n, goes into everything, and that gives me 2n squared plus uh, 3n, so 4n times the 3n would be 12n squared, plus 1. And I reckon that can be factorised. I'm going to write 4n. Uh, I reckon 2n plus 1 and n plus 1. 2n squared plus 2n plus another. And yeah, it works. Um, and that, of course, is 24 sigma r squared. And remember, we don't want 24 sigma r squared. We want to know what sigma r squared equals. So it's 4 over 24n. Um, I might as well put them in the right order. But I remember seeing it the n plus 1 first. And of course, this is equal to a sixth of n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, which is what we had before, which is nice, because that's the form that we wanted. Um, so I'm going to have a look at this now. It says verify that this is true. So I'm going to have a go at this. So we've got 1 over r minus 1 over r plus 2. Um, it wants me to show that it's equal to that. So it's similar to one we did before. We're going to put it all over r, r plus 2. And this is being times by r plus 2. This one's being times by r. And if I do that, they cancel it on top. So it definitely is giving me 2 over r, r plus 2. Which, of course, is what it wanted me to do. And now I'm going to try to um, use the method of difference. So I'll just make some space, but I'm going to say if I delete all that on there. And so using... Um, this again then. Um, oops, I need to turn my pen up again. So using this again, let's let's try to do this. 
So we need to find this, and that the way we're going to do it, we're going to pretend that really, because of this up here, I can say, well, it's really equal to 1 over r minus 1 over r plus 2. Notice how we've introduced the minus. So this is always the key factor. You've got an expression which hasn't got a minus, and you go, ah, let's write it with a minus involved. And when r equals 1, this is a method we were using. We were chopping 1 into this expression. And that gives me 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3, I reckon. If I put 1 into there, I get 3. Um, plus, when r is 2, I get 1 over 2. 2 into there, and 2 plus 2 is 4, so minus 1 over 4. You can already see. Well, not quite, actually. I thought it was going to all cancel. It hasn't yet. r equals 3. Let's do this. That's 1 over 3 minus... Put uh, 3 in there, I get 1 over 5. Uh, now I can see it cancel. That has gone with that. I reckon the next one, if I put a 4 in there, you don't have to do this, but you see it's for each, so I can show you. It would be 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. And eventually you get bored of doing that. But what you can see is the 4s are going to go. So that 4 went with that. Four. I reckon this back one will go with the next one, the sixth will go with the next So I'm going to end up being left with that and that. Let's stick to the other end. I'll, I'll have an r equal n. I'll have an r equal n minus 1, and I'll have an r equal n minus 2. So this one is plus. Well, this is the nice one, because you can just use the formula they gave us. Here, into there. And when r is n minus 1, I reckon it's 1 over n minus 1, minus, you know, minus n minus 1 plus 2 is, I reckon, 1 over n plus 1. And this one will be 1 over n minus 2, minus 1 over, now it's minus 2 plus 2, 1 over n. Now the great news is that's going to cancel with that. And there's a bit of symmetry involved here, because if effectively, the next one I have here, well, the last term in it, will cancel with, well, it kind of misses out two terms. So I reckon it will cancel with that one. And then this one will eventually go, and I reckon I'm going to be left with those. So my answer is, I think when I do this, I get, well, my first term, 1 over 1. Plus my second term, 1 over 2. Minus this term, which is minus n over, uh, 1 over n plus 1. Minus 1 over n plus 2. So that's, well, that's 1 and a half. That's 3 over 2. Minus, and if I write this instead with a bracket, and that makes that a plus, then I can do a bit of magic here. It's obviously it's a plus because it's a minus outside the bracket. So um, I'm going to put them all over n plus 1, n plus 2. And if I put that on top, that will give me an n plus 2 plus an n plus 1. Um, and up here I'm just going to write, I reckon it's 3 over 2 minus, uh, what's that, 2n plus 3 over n plus 1, n plus 2. I'm not sure if that's the answer I've got, well, whether or not that can be tied it up to. What was my? Oh, that was more or less the same. In fact, I stopped there. I stopped a little bit earlier. So, um, just more examples of the same thing. I hope you get your head around it. And the mere fact I'm doing so many examples implies I know it's a bit tricky. Um, extension of this. We've previously seen this answer. Um, so I've said there's the sum of all this equals, and I think that's what we got last time when we tied it up. And uh, that wasn't on today, or the, rather this second PowerPoint. It was on the first method of differences. So sometimes you get asked to do this. It says, rather than just 1 to n, what will happen if it goes from 1 to infinity? And we can use one of these two. I'm not sure which one's going to be best. It's probably this one, the one which we didn't simplify, is actually the best one. Because if n equals infinity, as in it was n, and now I'm saying it's infinity. So if we've got a really big number, then this equals 1 minus 1 over a really big number. Adding 1 to that really big number won't matter. And if I do 1 divided by a humongous number, it's basically nothing. So I reckon the answer is 1. Um, 
I think that's what I think it is. And you could think of this in the same way. That divided by infinity divided by infinity plus one is still one. So just be aware of those. I've got some, some questions here, by the way, on factorials. And this is because I know it comes up on this. I'm just want to just make sure you know what's going on with factorial. So four factorial, by the way, um, is one times two times three times four. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. If you do that, you get 24. Seven factorial. There's a button on your calculator, of course, that does this for you. So if you do all that up to seven, that's what seven factorial means. Apparently it's 5,040. There's a trick when you do eight factorial divided by two factorial. Uh, uh, six factorial, sorry. This means 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 8. And I'm dividing then by 1 times 2 times all the way up to 6. Um, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the reason why I'm doing that is because these will cancel with the first 6 up here. And I'll just leave 7 times 8 and therefore 7 eighths are 56. So have a go at some of these. Um, and they're just, I mean, they're just trying to get your head around what factorial notation is. This second one is looking at what you have to do on factorial notation questions. So you need to know, for instance, if I've got 5 times 4 factorial, well, I might as well call it 5 factorial. That might seem obvious, but it's not quite so obvious as you think. So over here, what's m plus 1 times m factorial? Well, I might as well just call it m plus 1 factorial. If I have the next number after the n factorial, then it's m plus 1 factorial. Yeah, that's really all the same. So look out for factorial notation. Um, everything else I'm hoping is okay. I might as well do this. I think I've got a couple of minutes. I think that's it. Yeah, so I might as well just do this uh, last couple. I'll do this one first. 7 times 6, that's 5 factorial. We might as well call that 7 factorial. This is all the numbers all the way up to 10 times by each other, divided by all the numbers up to 9 times by each other. And they will cancel with all the numbers, and I'm just going to be left with that 10. So the answer to that is 10. I think I've done all of those. So your job is to do exercise 1D. It's going to be um, uh, on Moodle. I'll put the uh, PowerPoint, the uh, exercise, sorry, for you to do. Um, and, but the only thing is, some of you haven't done partial fractions yet. So year 12 students, if you're doing this in year 12, you haven't done partial fractions yet, so miss out question four. I think it's the only one that needs partial fractions. But if you see anything where it mentions partial fractions, or perhaps you just don't know what's going on, that might be why. Okay, so look out for that. Don't do question four unless you've done partial fractions already. Best of luck, and uh, I hope that works well.